Hello and welcome back to World War II History and Reenacting. This is Felpos Sunday. Finally, it's Sunday yet again, and you're obviously here. Thank you so much. We're going to take a look if there's anything in the studio mailbox today. Hopefully there is. What do you think? You think we got anything in the mailbox? Let's take a look. Why wait? One, two... Ha! We have a post. Perfect! I love Sundays. I love Sundays. That's a giveaway. Well, it's photos. Ooh, but it's a lot of photos. That's what I like. There's a lot of photos. Perfect. Nothing inside. Nice. What have we got here? Oh, there's a whole bunch of photos. Oh, nice. These are great. That's awesome. But I'm not going to show you. All right, let's start from the beginning. So, I'm not even going to count them. I'm just going to start from the from the top. This is there's so many cool photographs. So first of all, this is a very nice and sharp original photograph with great detail, contrast, well, everything's in focus. Uh, let's take a closer look. First of all, I noticed this officer standing right here with his pistol holster on his back. Uh, he also has his riding breeches and riding boots and his visor cap. <laughs> it looks like he's holding his nose. But I hope not, because this guy is serving him food from these Essentrager. And this porcelain plate, which is pretty cool to be in the field, getting served on a regular porcelain plate. But that was not uncommon. This guy could be uh, the Feldkoch Unterwitzier. But it seems kind of strange that he's in the field serving the guys from the Essentrager. So maybe this is just a regular NCO. These are actually hot food carriers. The soldiers used to carry these on their backs. If the unit was too far away from the field kitchen or other cooking facilities and they needed to bring food to the front lines or generally into the field. Over here is also a vicar basket it looks like and some other containers. This probably held bread or other things. Over here is another NCO as far as I can tell. He's just chilling out in this this vehicle. If somebody knows what kind of vehicle this is, please let me know in the comment section because I'm not that good on these types of vehicles. I know the basics, but not all these... Um, finding out what vehicle this is by looking at small details like this. So if you, if you know what vehicle this is, please let me know in the comment section. And based on everything I see on this photo, I'm guessing this is probably a, a pre-war photograph from a Maneuver or something. Um, Let's take a look at the back and see if, if there's anything written on the back. So we can see this photograph is dated 1938, which is what I thought. So here we have another very sharp and detailed photograph. Just what I like to see. Look at all this detail. And what a cute dog. So it looks like we have a group of soldiers here. They're waiting in line to get served food, I guess. Out of this, looks like a house placed on a truck bed. So this must be like a, a mobile kitchen of some sort. Maybe there's a field kitchen inside this this wooden construction. All of these guys are wearing pre-war uniforms, it looks like. And pre-war field caps. That's interesting. This guy right here appears to have a... Ooh, what model is that again? The, the 1910 Reichwehr uh, mess kit. So these were a little bit larger than the standard M31 mess kit, 
from the World War II era. Uh, here's another one with the 1910 model. You can see these are just straight up aluminum. It doesn't look like there's been any paint on these. All these other guys have the regular and modern M31 version. This guy has even inscribed what appears to be his initials, GB, if I can read that correctly from all the way up here. Here's another one. I can't make this out. I won't even try, but we'll see when I zoom in in the photo. It looks like it could be like in the beginning of the war. could even be in, in Russia on the Eastern Front, to be honest with you guys. This building looks kind of kind of Russia to me. <laughs> oh, I almost didn't see that. This guy, he's wounded. So he has a field dressing on his hand. That's pretty interesting. Maybe an accident, maybe a battle wound. Who knows? This guy is wearing, wearing a work uniform. But it appears to be uh, the 1940, 1940 model, the green one, and not the pre-war one. So that's pretty interesting. This guy is wearing belt hooks, as well as this guy over here. There's a lot of details to be found. I bet you can stare at this photograph for a while and find a lot more and point out a lot more details than I have now. But I really enjoyed t sitting down, just taking a look at the, the photograph and, and notice all the details. Because there's so much information in the details. It's, it's, it's so much fun to, to try and make sense of what's going on in the pictures. It's really, it's really neat. It's not just a picture, it's like a story in itself. So you can learn so much from, from what uniforms, how they wear, wore them, different combinations. You can see the different types of equipment used in the same unit. Uh, it's, it's, it's an abundance of information to be found on original photographs, more than you can ever find in a book or in a manual, because that's just guidelines. That's just, that's just how it was supposed to be. But, but this is the reality, and here you can get so much more information if you're in a reenacting, or you are a collector, or make small models. It's so much information to be found in original photographs, and it's just so much fun to really sit down and look at the photograph in detail. Yeah, let's move on before. <laughs> let's move on, let's move on. Let's see if there's anything in the back. Well, nothing on the back. All right. So this appears to be from the same series. Yes, yes, it seems. Yeah, this is the, this is the, um, the mobile field kitchen I was talking about. You see, there's a big house. Here's the chimney. And there's the truck. Maybe there's a field kitchen inside. Maybe there's a stove inside. I don't know. I wasn't there, but I've seen both. But anyways, here's a civilian right here. There's a young boy in his. Maybe it looks like uh, the coat is a little large on him, but <laughs> nonetheless, I'm starting to think more and more that this could actually be um, the Eastern Front or maybe Poland or something. What do you think? Please uh, let me know down in the comment section. Here you can see some other boilers. I'm not really sure what these are yet. I should know I know, but I don't. <laughs> so here's an officer with his visor cap and riding boots and riding breeches. So let's see if we're lucky. Is there anything on the back telling us where this is? Nope. Nothing. <laughs> oh, here's another one from the same series, it appears. Yes, that's the same. We have the same uh, mobile field kitchen. And I'm guessing this is one of the first photographs in the series because it looks like they're making the food that was served later on. So these guys here are sitting here peeling potatoes. And they're peeling into these big pots and buckets. And I'm guessing this is for the horses. So they would use the, the potato peelings for the horses to eat. This guy over here is uh, on guard duty. He has his helmet on and his guard equipment and uniform. You see a couple of these Essentrager. They're sitting on ration crates, it looks like. Over here is a big pile of wood. You can see on this building how this building is built. It's, it's uh, like a log log house or log building so this even strengthens my my thought about this being maybe the eastern front even more and more I, I think this is like a typical typical house to see in some of these regions 
So as all of you probably already know, I'm kind of a nut when it comes to, to field kitchens. And I believe I can see perhaps a field kitchen inside the window of this mobile kitchen unit. So that's pretty cool. This guy over here seems to be on cleaning duty. Some of these guys are wearing the, the pre-war work uniform, at least a jacket. Let's see if there's anything on the back helping us out. There is nothing. No information. Let's do the next one. <laughs> so if you've ever wondered why the comms were down when you were in the service, this is probably why. <laughs> so here we have, um, I'm not that good at vehicles, so please help me out if you know. It looks to be like a Funkelwagen or something, a, a communications truck or some sort. This guy is obviously uh, some kind of operator in the in this unit. He has his headset on and... Yeah, it's totally chaos in this vehicle. I, th I see a belt and a bayonet just thrown on the floor. Uh, nice watch, by the way. He's drinking some kind of wine in the glass. And this guy is shirtless, always shirtless. But that's how it was, you know? That's how it was. You can see some kind of radio equipment over here. Could, could look like it's... Maybe looks like there's some kind of camouflage paint, but... I'm not sure. This is a wooden construction, obviously, because the nails. It's really nice. Really cool, cool picture. So now you know why the comms are down. <laughs> oh, that's a really nice picture. I really like this. Overall, nice sharpness, nice contrast. Um, really happy about this picture. Let's see if there's anything on the back. Something. I can't read that. If you can, please, please tell me. There's a number 43. This could be the year, but I'm thinking this is just uh, a number on maybe a... Yeah, I don't think this has anything to do with the year. I think it's just the number of the image, number of the photograph. So here we have... Oh, that's a nice one. So this is like a, a bread warehouse for the field bakery, I'm guessing. This is a commisbrot, or soldier's bread, in storage, ready to be shipped off to the troops. Really cool. So obviously the field bakeries, they made a lot of bread. This guy has a really cool mustache. Let's zoom in and take a closer look. Oh man, look at this guy. Cool. So in general, every soldier got half a bread a day. So if you think in a division or an army group, just think of how many loaves of bread you would have to bake. And all this was done in the field bakeries, man. It was incredible. This logistic of everything. It's, it's, that's a really nice, really neat photograph showing a side of the Second World War that we rarely see in any movies or any, anything else. This is, this is real history, man. This is real history. This is what I like. I really like this. Let's see if there's anything on the back. 82. Again, that's just some kind of identification number for the for the owner, I'm guessing. Oh, so here we have a very relevant picture to this channel or this video series. It's Feldpost. <laughs> so this guy is sitting on a stack of hay or a pile of hay in his worn out sweater without any boots or shoes on, just in his regular, looks to be issued socks, by the way. Just sitting down. I'm guessing he's writing maybe a letter to his wife or something because he has a wedding ring on. And we have to try and zoom in a little bit and see if we can see if there's any Feldpost number or anything. We can identify the unit. So, so much information to be found on, in, in original photographs and so much to learn. I really like this stuff. Overall, nice sharpness and contrast. A very nice photograph. So, let's see if there's anything on the back. Nothing on the back. All right. Nice. So this is a very interesting image. Here we have some information to go on. Uh, <laughs> yeah, obviously we have a cow riding in a truck. This is some kind of Lastkraftwagen or a large truck of some sort. Here we have a soldier in his yeah, early to mid-war uniform. So at least we're probably into the war at the moment. 
belongs to the Wehrmacht, WH. And we also have this nice little marking here. Now, I'm not really good at these markings, but I know this is the Flegung, the square with the X. So, um, the Flegung meaning, what's the English term? Supply, supply. The Flegung meaning supply unit. And these two circles underneath means that it's a motorized unit. Normally there would be a V, etc. for the Flegung or some other type of supply unit. But in this case, the ST, the abbreviation ST, usually stands for Stabskompanie. And maybe that's a V over there saying it's a Verpflegungstross. The N, I'm not so sure of what that means. If you know, please let me know in the comment section. So this vehicle belongs to a staff company and a supply unit. Pretty nice, pretty nice, pretty nice. He's uh, going to be goulash one day, I'm sure. Let's see if there's anything in the back. Nothing interesting. But here we have something cooking. Nice. So what I can tell from looking at this photograph here, we obviously have a German field kitchen. And this is the main food kettle right here. It's, it looks to be, it looks like it could be a, a large model HF-13, the World War II version. So obviously they're cooking some dinner in here. It looks like it could be rabbit. Could that be rabbit? It, to me it looks like this is rabbit. Rabbit stew or something they're cooking up. So, who says the Germans did not eat well? I've talked to lots of veterans on the most horrible, horrible outposts on the Eastern Front, on the very, very, very spearhead of everything, even when it went bad. They always wondered how in the world anybody could bring them food in those conditions. It's, it's remarkable. This is a part of history that is often overlooked. The food part, how to feed the troops, is the most important thing of an army. There's nothing more important. Nothing. If you know anything that's more important than food for a soldier, please let me know in the comment section, because frankly, there is none. You can fight without bullets, you can fight without guns, but you can't fight without food. That's, that's just how it is. It's a really, 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 really interesting topic for me, at least. The field kitchen and the supply, supply chain. Really nice photograph. It's a little small. So let's take a look and see if there's anything on the back. Unfortunately not. So obviously this has been removed from an album, which is a shame. I'm really not a big fan of, of uh, removing anything from a, or separating any lot or any, anything that belongs together should stay together, but I didn't rip it out. I didn't know it was ripped out. And if it's ripped out, it's ripped out. So I can't do anything about it anyway. But n nice photo nonetheless. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. So here we have another very interesting photograph. Again, it's the field kitchen. I'm sorry, I'm really into field kitchens. That's just me. But anyways, it's a really nice and clear photograph again. Nice contrast, nice uh, motive. Let's take a closer look and see if there's any nice details to spot. Yeah, before I forget. <laughs> um, up in the corner here is uh, one of the field kitchen accessory containers which held coffee, tea, spices and other things like that. And this is actually a compartment which is open behind here. This is the lid for the main kettle. Uh, over here is a compartment uh, which is opened, and this is where this one belongs. Here's also the instruction plaque for how to operate the main food kettle, which is really nice. Yeah, moving on again. <laughs> Sorry about the slight detour. These guys are waiting for a meal, a hot meal from the field kitchen. A really cool thing about the field cooks is that they are always, always uh, in a state of unregulation. They never wear any uniform or anything like that. They're always, sometimes they're even just in their underpants. <laughs> 
that's just how it was. I guess you didn't want to upset the field cook because, you know, you know how it is. So <laughs> apparently they were they were allowed to, to dress as they wanted. Here you can obviously see the field kitchen. The brake is applied to the to the big heavy oak wheels. These are like one meter and ten centimeters tall. Really big wheels, really heavy. Here is the, the front wagon, the Vorwagen. And this must be the maybe the field cook or the field cook helper, the second field cook. Um what else? What else? So this is the large field kitchen, model HF13, which is the World War II model. You can see the smokestack. Here we have an NCO. Maybe he's the highest ranking individual here, and therefore he is going to taste the food from the field kitchen and approve it for serving, which is a very cool thing in the German army that uh, officers and NCOs, even the generals, mostly ate the same thing as the soldiers, the exact same thing. That was a really cool, cool aspect of the German army at the time, at least. I don't know how it is now. If any of you are in the Bundeswehr or anything like that, please leave in the comments how things are done today. Is it done similar or not? Here's a nice little detail as well. You can see the, the aluminium plates. These were issued to the field kitchen. They had six in each large field kitchen. And it was normally the NCOs and officers that got served their food in these plates. Uh, that's pretty cool as well. Sometimes they had porcelain plates even, as we saw in one of the other photographs earlier on. So this is a qualification badge for the Steuermann, which was worn by qualified helmsmen for engineer assault boats. So all these guys are wearing early to pre-war uniforms and jackboots. I can also see M31 mess kits. Let's see if there's anything on the back. Oh, we have something on the back. An der Feldküche, Vormarsch, by the field kitchen during the advance. Is that correct? <laughs> if that was wrong, please correct me. Let's move on to the next one. This is quite an interesting photograph. Hmm. So this is not my main area of expertise, but I think this must be looking at um, the Kragespiel or the collar insignia and the shoulder boards. There's an, looks like an M there and there's a rank pip over here. Please uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe this is what's called an Obersaalmeister. Yes, uh, Kriegsverdienst Kreuz, zweite Klasse. That's a nice little dog too. You see the wedding ring, double claw, officer belt, a lot of nice details. So this actually appears to be a regular issued soldier's uniform that is converted by a new collar, a stand and fall officer's collar. You can see he has no French cuffs, just a regular standard issue uniform. It's been shortened a little bit. That was unfortunately all the Feldpost we had for this time. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, Auf Wiedersehen.